This is the Dog Savant Podcast with your host, Brett Endes. Hey everyone, welcome to the Dog Savant Podcast, episode one. I am Brett Endes, I'm your host. I am a professional dog trainer for 25 years. I am a problem behavior specialist. I train people, I train their dogs. Um, I have been the host of a podcast before. Uh, this is a new series. We're going to start from scratch, episode one. This is the welcome episode. So uh, I want to just give you an overview of what to expect uh, from the podcast, give you a little bit about me and my background. As far as dog training advice, we're going to talk a lot about that in future episodes. We're going to have specific uh, subject related matter talked about in different podcasts. If I said that right, that made sense. Uh, we'll have guests, hopefully. Um, this is also our temporary studio at my home. Uh, we're going to be transitioning to a permanent studio probably within the next month or so. Uh, but I wanted to give you a little video here along with the audio since everyone else does it. And it's uh, good to put a face to a voice. Um, so um, I want to be real here. I want honesty. This is a podcast where we're not just going to be here to make friends. I'm going to speak you know, pretty openly about things and my experiences that I've learned very much so from what I put out online not everybody likes. Um, you know, I think anyone who's followed me on social media knows my opinion about certain areas of dog ownership in the dog training world. And again, this only comes from my work as a dog trainer. I think doing a pretty good job helping dogs and owners reconnect, especially when that relationship is severed from some pretty severe problem behaviors. And I find that a lot of these cases I've seen uh, came from other trainers. I have a pretty strong feeling about what works and what doesn't when it comes to dogs. And if, uh, th that's not an opinion. That's just actual facts from talking to a lot of unrelated people. Don't want to go too on that track, but I did want to give you a little bit of that background of uh, why sometimes I may talk about dogs and training and people as I do. Uh, the podcast is also going to talk a little about me and my life. Um, I'm in the process of signing to do a series on Juke and Media, so I think it'll be nice to have a little bit of a personal side of me aside from the series that's going to be online soon as well. Um, I have a dog training, boarding, and uh, daycare facility with other services as well in uh, Los Angeles and the San Fernando Valley. Uh, my website's dogtrainingla.com. You can go there to connect with me to find other episodes, videos, and whatnot. Um, okay, Jordan, I got the business stuff out of the way, right? That's my producer, Jordan. You don't see him, but he's here helping me. He'll be kind of maybe giving me some feedback once in a while, and he's going to do a bang-up job keeping me from losing hours and hours of my time talking and not fucking it up like he did earlier. Right, Jordan? All right. So um, let's talk about me. Uh, again, I'm a dog trainer for a very long time. I do this full time. It's not a hobby. I'm not a, uh, you know, I don't know, the online slacktivist where I just speak my opinion about dog training, but I haven't worked more than my own or a couple friends' dogs, okay? I've trained estimated 20,000 dogs or more professionally, and most of these dogs having some kind of behavioral issue. I've come to some pretty good conclusions by seeing enough of the same thing over and over pattern-wise, both in dog and human behavior. Um, so, you know, that's where my experience comes from. Uh, I see numbers-wise, you want to talk specifics, I'd say anywhere between 30 and 40 individual clients a week. Um, I had previously done a lot of home-based stuff. Uh, now I'm going to have them come more to my facility. I'm still going to work with clients and dogs do group classes and just, you know, again, cover every element of why dogs fall out of balance in the relationship with their owners and address the root cause of that. Um, so that's going to be a lot of a lot of subject matter on that. I want to talk about dog training topics. I have one today I'd like to share. Everyone knows about it, but I figure I'll give you my two cents since that's what people are doing now. We're all, um, oh, what do we call, what do we say? We all have an opinion as a dog people. Um, as me, I'm a little nutty. I'm anxious like your dogs are. So, you know, pardon me the way I am, but uh, I am who I am. And uh, I don't know, shit, it's hard because this is a stream of conscious. I'm not warmed up doing this. You know, as we get rolling and we do some more episodes, I think I'll get the, the, the hang of things. But uh, I think for now, let's see. Let's, let's talk about, uh, let's see before I bomb on this shit. Jordan, what should I talk about? Uh, any current events. Current events. Dog current events. Um, oh, okay. You know what? Um, you know that video with the lady? You, you guys, you know the video, the lady with the bat, that slob of a dog trainer? I think she's out of Rhode Island. Um, I'll look her up and we'll, we'll see if we can uh, comment on the video. But it was a very, very poorly handled dog training situation that really does not help 
paint any trainer from any school of thought um, in a good light. And uh, so let, let's look here. I got my handy laptop. I'm going to be, so pardon me while I'm looking this up here. Okay, here we go. So here's the video. Um, I don't know if you'll be able to see it once we put this on YouTube, but um, I'm sure you've all seen it. It's the uh, it's the Academy of Canine Behavior. Uh, Carrie Taylor is her name, the trainer there. I guess she's this is an older video, and it was I guess resurfaced recently. And oof, boy, you can't have any skeletons in your closet nowadays. You're fucked. I mean, even if you did, I mean, this shit that I'm sure I've said in the past. That I mean, I've never done anything like this, but. You know, I probably have said a few choice words that nowadays wouldn't be seen as so great. But uh, fuck it. I say what I want. I'm not hurting anyone. So let's watch this. Um, okay, so it is a morbidly obese lady with a what looks like... And there's people laughing in the background. Uh, it looks like a cattle dog or something or something like Australian Shepherd. Something. It's kind of blurry. Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, Australian Shepherd. So she's carrying a... She's got the dog in like a really shitty, bad position heel um, in the middle of what's like a training center. And she's got a red plastic kind of wiffle ball bat, like the kind of the real fat on the end. I um, know. And this dog is walking very, let me lower this a little so you hear me. This dog is walking really hesitantly. I mean, you get a little tail wag here and there, but it is. Yeah, and boom, it gets ahead. She gives it a quick little check, which, yeah, it's like a bonking technique. Some people do something like that with like a healing stick, I guess. But here's where it gets fucking gnarly, and you can hear this. Listen. She is just wailing on this poor fucking dog. And I'm not ver I'm just telling you what I'm seeing. I never watched the whole video. I just seen like quick clips. Now the thing is hiding behind a chair. She's pulling it out. Okay. Such a bad dog, he's mad at you. That's what the lady filming is saying. In the meantime, this beast of a human is shuffling her outwardly spread feet that are actually walking on the sides of him because she probably has fucking gout. And she's dragging this dog who is now walking with such hesitant steps because she it knows what's going to happen. Now, this is only... We are only now a minute and 30 something into the video. So we've got another minute and a half left. I can't wait to fucking see how this keeps going. If this is how we got into the initial round of training. And well, this is how she's going to teach the dog not to snarl. There's more skillful ways. That's for sure. And that is shitty positioning, bad commitment to the command. The dog is tense, not down fucking ready to hop up any second as without even cueing it out of the fucking command. So not only are you a dog abuse, you're also, yeah, and you're going to, oh, I'm shaming her. Yeah, please, the people like this need to be shamed. She should be helping herself and not worrying about a dog's issues. Dogs can help themselves a lot better than this person, apparently, on a lot of levels. Um, but she's not even releasing or commanding the dog into a heel when she starts walking. She's just letting it, terrible, terrible training technique walking like some kind of robeast I, I I can't I'm I'm sorry I'm look this is me but I'm I'm gonna say what I say this person has a lot of issues with her own self-discipline and she's acting out on this dog dog's collar is way too low all right good good with a tail fucking low and hesitant dropping into a down at a submission yeah fuck I, yeah for years, you never see me narrate another trainer's video. Here you go, guys. That's what they used to do to me. This is no good. This is real abuse. So kind of put in perspective, spectrum. Babying a dog, treats and all that shit. A little balanced training, you know, asking a dog to, like, listen and feel more content with everyday life. And then this shit, okay? That's a fucking spectrum. Life is a spectrum. Everything is context. All right. So this, is anyway, it goes on and on. Let me just fast forward to see if there's any more moments. I think the original beating was the uh, all it took. So that's the, that's not what training should be. And and again, like I said earlier, I think that just gives good trainers a bad rap, um, you know. And uh, I mean, it's clear, you know. I work, most of the work I do is in front of my clients, and no one would. I mean, no one would let you do that to their dog. So 
who knows what goes on behind closed doors with some trainers, but you know, that, that's just a person with issues. I think you should really do a lot of research when you're looking for a trainer, look for, you know, not only reviews, but get a referral, look at the work they do, ask to meet their own dog or the see videos of their dog or work they've done before and after not heavily edited because there's a lot of scams and dog training can be a, a, a good rewarding and lucrative career and there's a lot of people taking advantage of the good money people want to spend to help their dogs and uh these people have been apparently in business since like the, the early 80s so there i mean i saw another video quickly like that was their reception area and they've got a number of trainers i mean this is a multi-level business here that has been established for a long time they're making a lot of money so um not anymore they're pretty much done unless they i don't know who knows what people do but there's a lot of trainers that aren't going to be like that, but they're on that end of the spectrum. They're going to baby your dog. They're going to tell you what you want to hear. They're going to not be willing to tell you what you don't want to hear, and that's not going to help either. And that's you know a lot of the purely positive force-free training and the you know, clicker training or, or operant conditioning or lure and reward training, whatever you want to call it, has a place. I use it for a lot of areas of training, but there's also a certain kind of communication, and I'm not a corrective trainer. I use a lot of energy. Sometimes I use pinch collars. Sometimes I use flat collars. Sometimes harnesses are good, but in most cases, they're promoting pulling and reactivity when out on a leash. You know, they're just too ahead of themselves. And we'll get into the individual episodes talking about these different areas of problems and the causes and solutions and explaining how to help this for your dog or even if you're a trainer and you want to, you know, hear a different perspective. Um, you know, I've met with plenty of purely positive trainers that are more than open to hearing what I have to say. Local people who are like, look, we can't really announce that we met with you, but we know. And I'm not, again, what's called a balanced trainer. I use those techniques. I use purely positive techniques. I use a lot of Reiki techniques and a lot of meditative techniques and a lot of human psychological tactics to get people to do what their dogs fucking need. Um, and that's a lot more going on than saying I'm positive or this. Um, you know, so it's got to be put in perspective. And again, a lot of this podcast is going to talk about that climate in the dog training world, trying to set the record straight because I have a microphone and I can talk long form. When I do a, you know, a quick three sentence post, it, at this point, it's just to be an asshole. I even have a special group that's a private group that are called dog trainer groups are filled with assholes because we are assholes and our comments can be shitty. So I find with a podcast or even this series where I can kind of show, because I'm not like that when I'm with my clients. I'm giving the information needed and helping the dogs and the owners. And that's what I want to do more of for those people that appreciate it and want to hear it and can apply it to help their own dog or their own, you know, dog training business, you know, with their own clients. Um, and that's why I'm like, well, if you don't, why don't you just go somewhere else? Because I don't really want people to, you know, troll me or you will, but I don't, I don't need you to waste your time focusing on me go out there and help dogs even if you are using your techniques more time out there it's not going to hurt you know there's going to be trainers that have to clean up the mess of the first trainer that didn't do it right but i think any effort's better than sitting me 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 that that bullshit behind a computer that's fucking pathetic um let's see what else can, what else can we talk about jordan how about your your roots how did you become yeah, I mean, I'll talk about me. I, I go off topic, so pardon that. Um, Jordan wanted me to do some kind of outline, and I'm like, not, not, especially not for the first episode, because we don't even know what we're doing yet. We're going to just kind of, you know, we might have a subject, but that's about as good as we need. Um, my roots, I grew up in New York. I um, live here in Los Angeles now. I have been a dog trainer, I said earlier, about 25 years. I... Um, Grew up, you know, having a relationship, a close relationship with dogs and animals, just been kind of my thing. I, um, you know, I have kind of an awareness that has not only been inherent, but it's developed over a lot of years of doing what I do. And you just kind of walk in a house and you kind of know, you know, what it is. But I do have a very direct way of seeing things that I think a lot of people that aren't, you know, growing up in New York or the way I did aren't going to be as attuned to certain things. So my hypervigilance that creates, like I said, the anxiety that I can have also is a gift to help me be very aware to very subtle patterns, pick up on things that maybe the dog is picking up on to help make the right adjustments in that relationship. Um, oh, let's see. Is there anything else? Oh, so we're moving to a new facility. I'll tell you about that. Um, we're going to have boarding. We're going to have some daycare. We have grooming. We have a couple of pools. We're going to do even cat boarding. I'm going to have a media studio for the podcast there. Uh, we're going to have events. We're going to do seminars, um, you know, really substance-based stuff. 
not just, you know, kumbaya shit that I know some other trainers do that. Um, so that's exciting. That's going to be in uh, Los Angeles in the San Fernando Valley um, soon. The show I'm really excited about, that's called The Untrainables. That's like uh, 99% going to start shooting in a couple weeks. Um, and uh, after that, you know, let's just see how things evolve. I say at this point, because of the way life has gone the past few years here, um, you know, kind of working with all these people and having all these opportunities, it's, uh, I wake up every day not knowing what's going to happen. I just report to where I need to be reported, do what I have to do, and just kind of see what evolves from there. Um, how long have you been doing this, Jordan? 20 minutes. 20 minutes. 25. 25 minutes. So I think that's good for our first episode. We're going to try to keep this probably 30 to 60 minutes. If we have guests, we'll probably go a little longer because we'll get into the conversation. Um, I don't want to bore you, but I do want to make it where you're not. Because you know what is fuck? It's a weird balance because you could do like what a Joe Rogan does like three hours. And that's cool if you have a guest and you're riffing and talking. Maybe one day you can have one like that. But sometimes people are like, dude, I just want to hear that episode to get for my commute to work. And it's like a half hour. Um, but then I listen to ones that are like 10 minutes and they're a goddamn teaser. They almost sound like a commercial. I don't want you to feel like I'm, I'm promoting shit. I'll sell you shit later. But right now, I want to actually just give you the information and share myself with you. Um, that's why, you know, trolls, whatever you want to do, but put yourself out there too. Um, so anyway, I think that's, uh, that, that's it right now. I think that's all I can think of doing or saying. Um, have some training tonight. Uh, let's see, current events for the week. Oh, tomorrow. One other thing we're going to talk about. It's not going to be that, that subject of a podcast because there's a lot of, God, there's a fucking lot of them. Archery. I love archery. Um, I, uh, tomorrow take a entire day and it's going to get on other people's fucking panties in a bunch, a bow hunter field day course for the entire day. It's so cool. Guy Curtis Herman, he's like the local Southern California bow hunting guru. He's running the course. Um, it's very hands-on. We get to shoot at like foam targets. Maybe I'll do videos of me shooting. I have a little range up in the backyard also. Um, that's exciting too. And that's, again, we're not going to have an archery podcast, but I think we'll just talk a little bit archery. You never know. Maybe we'll talk about like archery people and their dogs or hunting dog topics. You know, I think that'd be interesting as well. Um, okay. Yes. I get excited with archery. It's like my little distraction from life for an hour here and there. Anyway, thank you for anyone that watched, even if it's one of you, I really appreciate it. Uh, again, send me questions, show ideas, um, just give me your feedback of things that I can do to improve this as we evolve it. Um, and um, yeah, just, you know, train your dog, do what they need, and they'll give you back everything you want from them. Thank you so much. Oh, and uh, don't forget to leave a review, rate, don't be a dick, and uh, have a great day. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching and listening.